In the not-so-distant past, normal people used to dream of being astronauts, bursting up into the sky and seeing the universe. It was always a far-off dream, with only a few hundred people ever having gone into space even at this point, but it was a dream nonetheless. Now though, even that dream has disappeared and been replaced by something far less ambitious. Instead of hoping us normies can one day make it to space, we've started rooting for billionaires to do it for us. As we've watched them control more and more of the world's wealth, we've seemingly given up on our own wide-eyed dreams and decided instead to live vicariously through the likes of Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and Richard Branson as they chase their personal space dreams. This is more than a little tragic on our part, but the consolation prize is that the latest installment of watching rich guys do cool stuff is a pretty good one. That's because until now, the Musk-Branson-Bezos space race has been a battle to build new technology that's capable of reaching space, but things have suddenly gotten personal, with one of those three guys seemingly making a desperate lunge to physically reach space first. Here's what you need to know. Virgin Galactic may be working to send billionaire Virgin owner Richard Branson on a suborbital spaceflight two weeks before Amazon founder Bezos plans to board his Blue Origin company's new Shepard vehicle to do the same thing, according to an anonymous source who spoke to space blog Parabolic Arc. Both flights are referred to as suborbital, which means they do not reach speeds high enough to remain in Earth's orbit once they reach space, according to Space.com. The flights do not come without risks. In 2014, a Virgin Galactic test flight crashed over the Mojave Desert, killing one of its pilots, according to the BBC. Furthermore, there are questions over what it means to reach space. Virgin Galactic's latest test flight reached more than 55 miles or 89 kilometers above Earth, according to Space.com. This is above NASA's 50-mile or 80-kilometer definition of space. Blue Origin's New Shepard can reach above 62 miles or 100 kilometers, according to the BBC. That's known as the Kármán Line, which broad international agreement designates as the starting point for space. So if the parabolic arc source is correct, Branson might get to space first, and Bezos might get to space better. However, there are mixed signals coming out of Virgin Galactic. After Bezos' trip to space was confirmed, Branson fueled the rumors he tried to beat Bezos to it by tantalizingly tweeting, Watch this space. But Branson's company released a statement saying that it had not yet decided on the date for its next test flight because it is still waiting on a license to fly. It also did not confirm or deny whether Branson will be present on that flight. The mixed messages from owner and company add to the slight sense of desperation around Branson, as though maybe he really wants this to happen, even if his company can't make the same guarantees. There's a sense around the whole thing that Branson is a bit of a beta billionaire, with his net wealth recently estimated by Forbes to be less than 2.5% of Bezos' ridiculous $201 billion. He really wants it, but can his company actually deliver it? At the moment, he's like the guy who goes on running and starts trying to race everyone else he comes across, but no one has really noticed because he's still way slower than them. None of it's really very edifying. But on the other hand, maybe it could be the start of some more literal competition between billionaires? Maybe we could all watch and see who could eat the most money? Or who could sail their superyacht around the world fastest? Or maybe we should just go back to putting monkeys in space? At least they wouldn't boast about who got there first and would generally be a bit cooler about the whole thing. They probably wouldn't have invested in any of these projects either, though. Jeff Bezos, the richest man on Earth, has a vision for the future of humanity that is out of this world. Literally. Last week, Blue Origin unveiled the design for its first lunar lander called Blue Moon. At the same time, Bezos announced his grand vision for humankind, to create floating colonies outside of Earth. Here's what he has in mind. According to a press conference, Jeff Bezos envisions human colonies in outer space capable of holding up to one trillion people in rotating cylinders called O'Neill cylinders. The O'Neill cylinder was developed by Princeton physicist Gerard K. O'Neill in 1974. According to data from the National Space Society, the design is made up of two 20-mile-long cylinders, both measuring 4 miles in diameter. The cylinders contain three land areas that cover a total of 500 square miles. They rotate in opposite directions, keeping the colonies aimed towards the sun. Bezos stated that the colonies would have high-speed transportation, farming land, urban areas, and recreational areas with zero gravity. He added that some areas of the colonies could be replicas of famous cities on Earth. 
The weather in these cylinders would be adjusted for optimal human comfort. According to Bezos, there would be no earthquakes and no rain. He claims that these cylindrical colonies are a better bet for sustaining human life outside of Earth, as opposed to Martian or lunar colonies, due to how far and how small they are to Earth in comparison. In order to cut costs, Bezos proposes transporting humans to and from the colonies in reusable spacecrafts such as Blue Origin's New Shepard, a suborbital space vehicle powered using liquid nitrogen designed for space tourism. The whole idea sounds pretty far-fetched. Bezos admits that this will not be a reality for this or the next generation, but he vowed to begin working on the infrastructure, saying, quote, If this generation builds the road to space, build that infrastructure, we will get to see thousands of future entrepreneurs building a real space industry. After his company Neuralink released a video of a monkey playing Pong via an implant in its brain last week, SpaceX and Tesla CEO Elon Musk has said on Twitter that it may be able to move to initial human trials later this year. In a presentation posted to Neuralink's YouTube channel, Musk says the implant is 23mm by 8mm and has electrode threads that attach to it that are implanted into the brain. The implant is inserted by removing a piece of skull. It then sits flush with the skull, unnoticeable to others beneath hair. The implant works by monitoring neuron activity in the brain. The University of Queensland describes how neurons operate as a kind of electrical system. First, an electrical signal called an action event is sent through one neuron. This action event triggers neurotransmitters to be released from that neuron's axon terminal into an area between two neurons. These neurotransmitters are received by the dendrite area on the next neuron, which transforms them back into an electrical signal, its own action event. In a company video, Neuralink's implant worked in two stages. First, it monitored neuron activity in the brain and matched it to movements from its user. Then, an iPhone began using only the neuron activity to recreate the recorded movements elsewhere. Now, speculation has begun over the potential applications of this technology. Forbes and others, following Elon Musk's lofty predictions, have suggested that the implant could be harnessed alongside self-driving cars. Half a billion dollars. That's how much the U.S. military is pouring into the development of this Jeff Bezos-backed project. The U.S. Air Force has awarded aerospace manufacturer Blue Origin a contract for the development of its reusable New Glenn heavy rocket. According to Engadget, it operates in a similar fashion to the SpaceX Falcon 9. After delivering its payload, the rocket performs a flip before returning to Earth and landing on a barge. The New Glenn rocket flies in a similar pattern, but can also land on a craft that is in motion. Blue Origin told CNET this means it can operate in varying sea conditions and provide dependable scheduling. SpaceX had to cancel the recovery of a rocket due to what the company described as unfavorable weather conditions in early March. It seems that operational capability in such conditions is where Blue Origin hopes to have an edge over SpaceX. The Air Force also rewarded a contract to United Launch Alliance for its Vulcan Centaur rocket. Northrop Grumman Innovation Systems will also receive funding to develop its Omega system. The funding comes as the U.S. seeks to move away from foreign-built space systems, especially the Russian RD-180 engine, which is currently used in U.S. Atlas V launches. If you build it, they will ride it. Maryland officials have given Elon Musk's The Boring Company the green light to dig tunnels for a Hyperloop project between New York and Washington. The Boring Company plans to dig a 10.3-mile tunnel between the state-owned section of the Baltimore-Washington Parkway, between the Baltimore City Line and Maryland 175 in Hanover. The company has developed tunneling machines that can efficiently drill through soft soil at only a fraction of the cost of traditional tunneling. According to Musk's estimates, a Hyperloop trip between Washington and New York would only take 29 minutes. The Boring Company wants to construct two 35-mile tunnels between Baltimore and Washington. The 10-mile section approved by Maryland will be the first section of the underground system. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.